the April 12, 2021 regular Wasilla City Council meeting is called to order. The time is 6 p.m. Before we begin, Council, please put away cell phones. If you have personal business to attend during the meeting, please move for a recess. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councilmember Johnson? Present. Uh, Councilmember Bernie? Here. Councilmember Vlock. Here. Councilmember Brown? Here. Councilmember Harvey? Here. Councilmember Rousa is absent this evening due to a family emergency. Uh, Madam Mayor, you do have a quorum with Councilmembers Johnson and Brown with us in person. Councilmembers Bernie Vlock and Harvey participating telephonically. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Mr. Brown, would you lead us, please? Yes, Mayor. Oh. Our Pledge of Allegiance is the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item of business is approval of the agenda. Are there any changes? Hearing none, the agenda will stand as presented. Uh, next on the agenda is special orders of the day. There she is. Uh, there's one proclamation which I will read. City of Wasilla Proclamation Recognizing National Telecommunicators Week Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services. And whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our emergency medical service responders, police officers, and firefighters are dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from the citizens who telephone the MATCOM Public Safety Dispatch Center. And whereas public safety dispatchers through the 911 system are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. And whereas public safety dispatches are the single vital link for our police officers and firefighters by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety dispatch of MATCOM dispatch have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminal criminals suppression of fires and treatment of patients and the public safety system simply would not work without them. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year, working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 365 days a year. Now, therefore, I, Glenda D. Ledford, Mayor of Wasilla, hereby proclaim April 11, 2021 through April 17 as National Telecommunicators Week in the city of Wasilla in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our city and citizens safe. Dated the 12th day of April, 2021. Millie Avaletta, would you come forward, please? It is my pleasure and great honor to present you with this proclamation. Next on the agenda is Commission and Agency Reports. Mr. Giddings, you're first. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, the Air Show Committee met last week, they, and they'll uh, continue to meet. Uh, the next meeting is on the 20th of this month. Uh, they, they're refining their program, 
and fundraising efforts. So no big news, but uh, everything's going forward. Thank you. Does the council have any questions for Mr. Giddings? Yes. Could you please repeat the date of the air show, please? Uh, yeah, it's the weekend of June 13th. I think that's a Saturday. Okay, any other questions? Up next is a report from Wasilla High School. Would you please come forward and state your name? Hi. Um, my name is Jordan Harris and I'm junior class president at Wasilla High. Um, at Wasilla High, we successfully helped to host ASAA state basketball tournaments and all spring sports are functioning. Wrestling had several meets, softball, baseball, and soccer have games this week. We are also hosting solo ensemble tomorrow. And spring OSOG will be held this weekend through Zoom. Our leadership class also put on a school scavenger hunt between the classes, which the seniors won. And in a month, we have graduation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it, does any of the council have any questions? Hearing none, thank you so much. So we are to 6.3, the physical year 2022 budget presentation. Finance Director Troy Tankersley. evening council um, mayor uh, for the record this is Troy Tankersley finance director it's my pleasure to present to you the uh, FY 22 supplemental budget this is the second year of the biennial um, budget um, <laughs> there you go I don't know how that happened <laughs> Um, it, we have uh, three new council members, and so with that, um, the other three council members have probably seen this presentation before, you know, like usual, the numbers change, the slides don't kind of thing. Um, so if there's any questions that you have throughout the slide, please, you can interrupt me and definitely entertain the questions. Um, this presentation is to overview, uh, this is kind of the agenda. 50 kind of the 50,000 foot level if you will without getting into the details as those work sessions will be coming down at a later date so with this agenda we're we'll talking about the mission of the city how the budget supports that mission uh, some budget premises those things that uh, aided in putting this budget together uh, some core contract service um, changes that kind of thing a few highlights and then specifically to the general fund special revenue fund and enterprise funds so it's the mission of the city of Wasilla to provide optimum service levels to the public as cost effectively as possible to ensure a stable and thriving economy promote healthy community provide a safe environment and quality lifestyle promote maximum citizen participation With that in mind, um, one of the goals, goal number one set by council, was to uh, pass a sustainable budget in which operating expenditures uh, don't exceed operating revenue. And as you can see, th that this budget does not do that. We have a net operating uh, plus, if you will, of $3.5 million. Secondly, we have to look at what a balanced budget is. And a balanced budget simply is that expenditures don't go in excess of revenue. And if they do, then that means we appropriate fund balance or net assets to balance that budget. And in this year, even though we had $3.5 million of operating, 
we're actually appropriating 4.7 million, almost 4.8 million in capital outlay, which is giving that 1.2 million appropriation of fund balance. And that's actually made up of three areas. It's about 787,000 of general fund, fund balance, 430,000 in the enterprise funds, and 11,000 in special revenue funds. And we'll touch on those a little bit later as we go. Additionally, with that goal number two, it says that the city will maintain and improve existing services. And as you remember, in December of 19, when the sales tax increased from two to two and a half percent, that additional half percent, we said to the taxpayers that that is to fund public safety to include both uh, MADCOM and the new public safety center, if you will, the garage we've added, um, the operations of the library, and additionally, we have growth as, as the city is growing. And with that, there's two and a half additional positions being proposed. One of them is a full-time mechanic uh, out at uh, PD for the garage. One of them is a full-time uh, IT manager. And the other one is to increase the current part-time museum aid to a full-time. Goal number three said that we would maintain a zero mill levy. And once again, this, this budget does that. And to equate that, using a two mill cap, that equates about $2.8 million that is saved by the city residents. Some of the general highlights is that the population of the city um, will be about 89 8,900 in, in 2021, followed by 108,000 of the Matsu Borough. And I threw in the 20 estimates that were there prior. It's about a 2% increase year over year. Now, although COVID and the changes that we're seeing, and, uh, you know, that 2% isn't always accurate, um, as, we, as we noticed. Additional code says that we'll use CPI for wage growth. And so the three years average CPI would be 1.1%. And I'll talk a little bit about more of that in a, little, in a little bit as well. Revenue premises, sales tax obviously is our primary source of revenue. And this is a very conservative approach um, this year um, with the growth of the sales tax that we've had uh, what we've seen and what I've reported to council and administration. Um, this is a 2.49% increase that I've used. It's about 443,000. Those negative signs, those parentheses actually shouldn't be negative. They should be positive. So I apologize for that. Additional to that is federal revenue. Is There's actually none other than the 150,000 that's being uh, projected for an airport capital project. These two graphs here, um, the upper left graph shows you the sales tax revenue as it relates to population and you can clearly see that the bottom line, the purple line, is the city resident population whereas the red line is borough resident population. So it's clear that the city definitely gains by the overall Matsu borough population with the city of Wasilla being the retail hub. The bottom graph is really a depiction of actual to budget comparison um, as it relates to sales tax. And we, we can clearly see that growth as well. Intergovernmental revenue, which is um, between the, uh, the governmental funds um, only, it's going to decrease slightly. And when I say slightly, it's about 50, 40 to 60,000. It's, it's not overly material. Um, municipal assistance would be about 117,000. However, there's talk again that, you know, in future years, the municipal assistance is going to go away. And most municipalities, we're no exception. We continually uh, fight to maintain the municipal assistance from the state. 
user fee revenue, it's going to be pretty much flat. Um, and that's primarily caused because of the, of the sports complex. The sports complex, when you look at last year and, in, and prior to FY20, the city's lost about $300,000 in revenue. And because of that loss, we've had to realign the revenue projection for the sports complex. And so you'll see an additional increase in transfer to the sports complex because of that. And as long as the sports complex um, continues to reestablish those existing contracts and contracts they've had in the past, and I'm, I believe and that they will, um, th that revenue needs to be subsidized uh, as going forward. Local and other revenue, um, that's primarily your DPS contracts, uh, 511, Chickaloon, those kind of things. Uh, that makes up about 72% of the dispatch um, expenditures. So overall operations are going to increase about 308,000, which is about 4.54% 4, 4. Uh, growth um, to about 7.1 million. The city administers three union contracts, um, Local 302, 341, WPDA, the police department, and then we have the non-represented. And the average salary increase associated to this budget is between 2 and 4.5%. Now, I'll pause here for a second because I want to talk about that CPI of 1.1 as it relates to this. When we talk about the three union contracts, 302, 341, WPDA, those contracts specifically call for a two per, excuse me, a two percent CPI, followed by anywhere between two to two and a half percent step. So that leaves the non-represented. Under code, non-represented would only get a 1.1. The proposed budget here equates that CPI to equal that of the other um, union contracts. So it's being used at 2%. And then the, the non-reps um, are between 2.25 and 2.5 on, uh, on the steps. So that way all four groupings, if you will, are equated. Personnel costs overall will increase 2.17 to 374,000 is what that equates to. Um, the wages side is 193,000, the benefits side is 180,000. Health insurance by the union contracts are set that they can't go in excess of 8%. If they do, then employees contribute above that. Um, those rates are starting to show up. Um, it's encouraging. I don't anticipate going beyond 8%. Um, so I don't, I don't have the actuals to do any adjustments at this point, so the 8% will, will stand for now. Uh, PERS, still at 22%. I haven't heard any more conversation in the legislature as far as a, a possibility of increasing that, but that's always something that we watch. You know, I know in prior years they talked about increasing it to 24. And then fiscal policies associated 22. So the, the city's goal is to pay for all reoccurring expenditures with reoccurring revenues. We also, um, the individual departments submit their budgets on basic assumption that the council will always maintain the current tax rate. And the budget's reviewed by administration and council, and they'll focus on that, that concept of staff economy and then capital construction. Under program. Madam Mayor. Excuse me? Yeah, Madam Mayor, it's uh, Councilman Bernie. Yes, sir. Um, if, if I could, uh, um, if I could ask uh, Mr. Tankersley to expand on PERS a little bit. To, I, I'm sorry, I didn't. He would like for you to uh, expand on PERS. 
Is there a specific question, Councilman Bernie, or? Uh, no, I, 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 I just, it's one thing we've always been worried about, right? So, um, do you have any opinions on it, or? Um, well, other than to say that I haven't um, seen any bills or conversations, and even with my colleagues, um, we haven't seen anything to alarm us that the state's looking to increase that, um, at least not this year. Um, you know, we watch it every year, right? So um, we've seen, I think, uh, what was it, two to four years ago is when they went after the 24%, which was pretty sizable for us. So but we watch that every year. What All I, right, thank you. What I can say is the 22%, as I've noted, equates to about $2.3 million of city contribution. And that's not the, the employee side, that's the city side. It's a big number. I left off with um, the policies of uh, program expansions, those requirements, um, how they're submitted to the budget. New programs are the same, a little bit more uh, in-depth. Existing programs are justified in administrative costs, overhead costs are kept to a minimum. All four of these are reviewed administratively as we go through the mayor's review um, by departments. Um, and then the city will integrate performance measures and productivity indicators to the budget. We do that um, as it relates to council goals, um, not required necessarily in the supplemental budget, um, definitely required in the biannual budget. We did do it in this budget though. The city maintains a positive unassigned fund balance in all the governmental funds, and that's the general fund, special revenue funds, debt service, capital projects. And that's really to establish those operating costs and, and whatnot. That's a, an accounting requirement as well. And stabilization of funds in the code specific to the general fund says it will maintain 50 to 60 percent um, of the expenditures and fund balance um, and that that's really to maintain a six-month reserve should things really go south and proudly we year over year we maintain that and as a matter of fact we maintain it at the high level of 60 yeah, percent I think you heard uh, Sam uh, Thompson from uh, BDO talk about that um, as, as a uh, very fiscal fiscal um, prudent approach to our fund balance. The FY22 targeted unassigned fund balance then will be between 8.2 and 9.8 million and it will be set at the maximum. And in the general fund, as I stati stated, um, we're proposing to consume 787,000 of uh, fund balance. The graph for the general fund unassigned fund balance, those lines, the upper line represents the max of 60%, the lower line the 50%. The dark blue is the unassigned fund balance, and so you can see year over year how that has um, equated bud both budgetarily and actual. With the following departments with contract service additions, um, in public safety, uh, the garage is a new uh, department that was completed, so we're proposing to put a mechanic in there. Total, however, the total budget is proposed at 150000 And the code compliance division of public safety has been moved out of public safety and moved into general government. Um, and you can see the costs related to that. Uh, so in general government, we're also adding um, an IT manager. And then 
like I mentioned, code compliance then moves over to general government as well. And in culture and rec, as I stated, increase in the museum aid from full part time to full time. Madam Mayor? Yes, Ms. V. Glock. Uh, um, to Mr. Tankersley, is it possible to see the justification that was used for the new full time positions? Um, you know, the mechanic and the uh, IT manager and upgrading that museum aid to a full time. Yeah, we can get you something. Uh, I would oh, okay. And also, um, the code compliance move from under what the police department under public works. Was there justification that was given to the union to allow that to become a non-represented position? Absolutely. That was a, a conversation between administration and the union and um, the previous position that was held, um, the employee had retired vacating code compliance. Uh, administration and WPDA had conversation, negotiated that out um, to make it a non-union position, um, thus creating it into general government. Okay, yeah, I was just curious. That's kind of surprising. They typically don't like to give up positions, so I was curious. And maybe before we go into the budget in a couple of days, we could look at the justification for the new positions. Absolutely. That would be my suggestion as well as when we go into the departments, um, we can certainly discuss those then. Okay, thank you. So after that, uh, so additionally, um, in the capital improvement fund, we're appropriating a million dollars for the road paving. And so the operating budget highlights, as you can see, um, is using $24.7 million. Um, and as far as the percentage goes, and you can probably be in the next graph uh, that'll that'll be displayed. These percentages are pretty consistent year over year. Um, they might fluctuate a little bit, but they're, they're very consistent looking back. Um, so as we can see, sales tax being 63, 64% of overall total revenue Again, all those, those revenue streams are very consistent over the prior years. And under expenditures, likewise, public safety being the largest, not a surprise, and again, uh, very consistent um, for the city. So moving into the general fund a little bit, the general fund is appropriating $24.6 million, and that includes over $4 million of transfers. And, that, and we'll talk about the transfers a little bit uh, as we move down to the next slide. But what's important is sales tax is 70%, 76% of our revenue stream. So obviously we're very protective of it. We obviously scrutinize it. With COVID, however, our auditor hasn't been able to get out and audit. Um, but it is nice to note that the online system that the city's implemented is going strong. It's uh, well received. Um, and so that continues to add to a reduction in expense, um, both in uh, postage and envelopes and the like. Um, and to, so we're tracking that. I don't have the numbers with me. And, and in this budget, this budget actually budgets, uh, as we get into my, my budget, 
um, actually maintains those budget expenditures because it's so new we don't have what that's going to be and we'll talk more when we get into my budget specifically uh, you can see the varying sources of general fund revenue um, the 18 million being sales tax with 76 percent this graph reflect reflecting sales tax and again that's very consistent for prior years and this is uh, the expenditure uh, summary for the varying uh, di uh, divisions and departments um, breaks it down by percentage and what those increases are um, and and the changes The one at the bottom for non-departmental and transfers that increased 619 that's an increase of 400,000 to the sports complex um, and I think it's no it's not next slide we'll get to the transfers here and I'll, I'll break that down a little bit more Right here so this uh, the graph on uh, slide 25 uh, for those online you can see with the Curtis Menard Sports Center where we have 605,000 going to operations now, last year when we projected the FY 22 plan we were only looking at um, I think it was about 400,000 in a transfer because of the growth of the sports complex and, and what's been going on year over year because of COVID and the reduction and the realignment of revenues we've had to change that additionally we've got a little bit more in capital expenditures than normal um, and there's a proposal for um, a pavilion going on out there to fund that as well so we have nine hundred thousand dollars needed out there um, so we've got an increase of a half a million dollars adding to that transfer line which then adds to the consumption of fund balance out of the general fund likewise the road CIP fund has got a, that million sixty so you can see that million dollars when in prior years it's not near that million dollars so that too adds to the consumption of the 700,000 in fund balance the expenditure breakdowns um, again there's nothing um, in these two graphs that's um, alarming to me uh, they're very cons they're very uh, consistent with prior years um, public safety being 53 percent very consistent and then moving into the special revenue fund now special revenue fund consists of the youth court we have two asset forfeiture state and federal and then the cares act the cares act by definition um, the auditors we have to put that in a special revenue fund so we had to make that um, a special revenue fund when we appropriated that money it's in the capital improvement fund so at year end we make those adjustments for financial statement purposes so in this budget you will see the fund for the cares act because I need to report that um, but there's no budget associated to it it's still really it's still all part of um, the capital improvement fund so the youth court receives um, approximately 77,000 in contributions from varying sources and we plan to spend about 86,000 in expenditures um, so we're going to consume about 11,000 of its fund balance and this this is normal for the youth court um, and as the fund balance drains down we oftentimes either encourage youth court to drum up um, donations that kind of thing 
or we ask for the borough's assistance for further contribution. Moving into the enterprise fund, um, we're going to, it's about 6.2 million in operating expense or appropriations, I should say. And this one, there's three arrows, and the very top arrow um, I'm somewhat excited about um, because it represents 503,000 in debt service payment out of the water fund. This represents the final payment in, as a matter of fact, for the entire city for debt service. So the city can really say we're debt free once that's made. The second arrow below that is a, is a pointer to say that we establish 50% uh, stabilization in the enterprise funds. And again, we consistently do that as well. And on top of that, that third arrow, it's always a positive net asset balance. Madam Mayor? Yes. Councilman Harvey, I just was curious, do we you know uh, exactly or approximately when that debt service payment will be made? Well, the payment's actually scheduled in March of each year. So it'd be March okay. of 22. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the graph here is net position versus benchmark. The city currently uses a 10% benchmark as it relates um, to its net position um, for unrestricted funding. Um, this is used in case uh, a pipe blows or something like that. What you're seeing, however, um, as these funds are increasing and in comparison to other utilities is more of a 20 percent um, unrestricted balance and it it makes sense when you think about it because of the cost of the pipe it cost of labor everything's going up and so what you're seeing is more between 15 and 20 more like 20 percent is seems to be the fiscal benchmark now um, in, in these utility funds. And just for um, notation, I believe the, um, yeah, the water fund is about just under 16% and the sewer funds just a hair over 10 right now. And Mike, I was referring to under debt service, uh, this is the principal payment, the 496350. Um, now, although the rate is only a point and a half, uh, that equates to about a 7.4, um, excuse me, 7.4, 7,400 dollars savings of interest. That's not a lot of money for the city. Um, I think at this point, it's more principal than anything else, and the fund can certainly sustain it. Under the capital improvement fund, again, it's reflecting uh, four years, even though we have a five-year plan. We update that five-year plan um, at the biennial budget level. Um, in 22, we're proposing 4.6 million, excuse me, $4.7 million um, in capital projects. And that listing for the, all the capital projects can be found in the budget under those, those pages and we'll definitely get into those during the uh, department reviews. And that concludes it, Mayor. If there's any questions from Council? Okay, um, hearing none, we will Go to next on the agenda is a public hearing on resolution serial number 21-06. Madam Clerk, please read the title of the resolution. Thank you. That's approving the issuance by the Public Finance Authority of its revenue bonds, Goodwill Industries of Lane and South Coast Counties Project, Series 2021, in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $7 million. 
Good evening. It is 6.39 p.m. on Monday, April 12, 2021. This is the time for the public hearing on the $7 million revenue bonds Goodwill Industry of Lane and South Coast Counties Project Series 2021. The bonds are being issued by a public authority out of Wisconsin for purposes of financing or refinancing the acquisition of the real property and improvements located at 751 East Palmer Wasilla Highway, Wasilla, Alaska 99654, consisting of an existing 25,000 square foot commercial building, the facility. Number two is funding certain capital improvements to the facility. Number three is funding any required re reserve bond funds for the bonds. Number four, paying certain cost of issuing the bonds, the, which is the project. Because the project facility is located in the city, and even though the city is not issuing the bonds for the transaction, it is a host jurisdiction and is therefore required to approve the transaction under the Tax, Equity, and Physical Responsibility Act, or TEFRA. This approval is solely for the purpose of satisfying the TEFRA public approval requirement. It has no other purposes or effect. The approval does not make the city liable or responsible for payment on the bonds or for the project facility. The City Council is conducting this hearing to take testimony from the public on the bonds in the project. After hearing any public testimony, the City Council will determine whether to approve a resolution authorizing the issuance of the bonds by the public authority. Are there any members of the public who wish to give testimony regarding the bonds or the project? Uh, I now close the public hearing at 6.42 p.m. Is there a motion to adopt resolution serial number 20-06? Council Member Johnson moves to approve uh, resolution 2021. It has been moved by Council Member Johnson and seconded by Council Member uh, Bernie to adopt resolution serial number 2106. Is there any discussion? Madam Mayor. Mayor. Yes. I was just wondering if there's any of the involved parties here tonight that would like to speak on this at all. Uh, we have attorneys on the phone. Um, and Mayor, I just want to let you know that uh, Michael Schwartz, uh, my colleague, is on the phone while we don't, while we represent the city and we're just here to assist with the TEFRA hearing, which would didn't uh, require much assistance. It turns out he is there. So if there are specific questions that anybody has. Mr. Schwartz, would you like to speak to this? Sorry, I just had to unmute my phone. I apologize. Well, I don't, I don't have anything other than, other than necessarily what you had mentioned before that, you know, this is solely an approval to satisfy the requirements of TEPRA. Um, the city won't be obligated on any of the bonds. Or, um, so John Self is here. John Self is is with Wells Fargo, um, and he's involved in the financing. In case anyone has any questions about the project, he has a little bit more knowledge about it. Mr. Self, would you like to? Thanks, oh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much. No, I, you guys, I mean, it's just a meeting that requirement, right, Mike? Necessary to facilitate this for the public authority to finish up the thing for the goodwill folks for the project in Wasilla itself. Clip. I appreciate it. One shot. Mr. Brown. Madam Mayor, 
I just want to make sure this doesn't obligate the city t with any consideration from the planning department as this project goes forward. No, no, it does not. It's, it, 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 that is completely separate from this. Thank you. Is there any more discussion? Madam Mayor. Yes. Just out of curiosity, this property that we were talking about acquiring is the former Johnson's Tyler facility, correct? Yes. Thank you. Correct. Is there any more discussion? Yes, Council Member, uh, Madam Mayor. So I understand then that we have no obligation. Is this also then we're not really endorsing the bonds either? We're just uh, making a mechanism so that they could be procured. Is that correct? Oh, correct. Correct. That's a fair way to characterize it. Very well worded. Okay. Any more discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please take a roll call vote on the adoption of resolution serial number 21 06. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Bernie? Yes. Vlock? Ms. Vlock? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yay. Uh, Mr. Harvey? Yes. Resolution serial number 2106 passes unanimously with Council Members Johnson, Bernie, Vlock, Brown, and Harvey in support. Council Member Rousa is absent and excused. There are no other items scheduled for public hearing, so next on the agenda is persons to be heard. Eileen Falkenstein. Has left. Eileen Falkenstein with Wasilla Area Seniors. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council Members. Uh, good news. It appears that Willow House, our new housing facility for seniors, is slated to begin accepting applications for occupancy in May and hopefully opening in November. That will be affordable housing for seniors in the area and if you know of anyone that's interested or needs that housing they can contact uh, Wasilla Area Seniors to get more information on that. We are right now our home delivered meals department is delivering upwards of 270 meals daily to our senior community and the good news is that with the State Cares Act grant funding WASI will be purchasing two new all-wheel drive Subaru Foresters to add to the existing fleet to help get these meals out to the seniors in the community. And we also have meals available at the Senior Center as always. We also have our um, house cleaning and chore services for seniors. And tomorrow is our quarterly membership meeting. It takes place at 1245 at the Senior Center and we will be serving pizza for lunch <laughs> if you're interested in attending. We will be having our Mouse for Meals fundraiser in June and there will be more information as that happens. There will be a silent auction accompany accompanying it this year and it will be both virtual and in person. And that sums it up pretty much for this month for the Senior Center. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. And next is Jessica. Good evening. I'm Jessica Vieira, the Executive Director of the Greater Wasilla Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are super excited to be going back to in-person luncheons beginning tomorrow. Um, we invite all of you to join us if you'd like. We still have a few seats available. Um, if you'd like to let us know, you can put your name on the list for that. Um, we do meet every Tuesday from noon to 1 p.m. and we will begin meeting here um, at Evangelos in Wasilla starting tomorrow. Um, our speaker tomorrow is state economist Neil Freed, who's always, you know, a hoot and gives us great information on what's going on with our local economy. And then our 25th anniversary military appreciation lunch will be held May 25th out at Settlers Bay Golf Course. Um, this is a great annual event that honors our past, present, and future military here in the Valley. 
Our tickets for that will go on sale in late April, and we are also hosting a spring raffle to help fund that event for our, so we can put on a good one since it's our anniversary event. Um, and if you're interested in those, I can get you information afterwards. Just let me know. And we um, have been seeing an uptick in visitor information requests and walk-ins to our office looking for information for visiting friends and family for this year. So we're really looking forward to a return of summer tourist season that looks a little closer to normal than we got last year, um, but we're very optimistic based on the information requests that are coming through currently. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I have one question, Jessica. So have you moved back into the depot, depot. yet? We are still in the old Dorothy Page Museum. Um, I see. Our, I think Archie would have to give you the most current update on where we're at with potentially moving back to the depot. But we're excited to move back to the depot, too, eventually. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Archie, would you like to give an update on that, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so the last piece of the puzzle as far as uh, the project goes is uh, MTA and getting all the data and phones uh, connected and, and uh, converted over. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council at this time? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please read the consent agenda. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have the special meeting minutes of March 18th, 2021, and the regular meeting minutes of March 22, 2021. We have one introduction with the recommended public hearing date of April 26, 2021. That's ordinance serial number 2107, amending the fiscal year 2021 budget by appropriating $11,793 to the General Fund Recreational Services Department from the General Fund Fund Balance for fiscal year 2021 air show. We have our next introduction with two public hearing dates, the first on April 26, 2021, and that's my bad. <laughs> the second on uh, April 28, 2021, and that's ordinance serial number 2121, providing for the adoption of the annual budget for fiscal year 2022 and appropriating funds to carry out said budget. We have no resolutions for approval under our consent agenda. Two action memorandums. The first is AM number 2119, contract extension to TechPro in the amount of $99,043 for the Spruce Avenue Well House upgrades, electrical services, and the second AM number 2120, contract extension to Wheaton Wells in the amount of $50,157 for the Spruce Avenue Well House upgrades, well services. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? Madam Mayor, Council Member Johnson, I move we accept it. Is there a second? Council Member Brown, second. It's been moved by Council Member Johnson and seconded by Council Member Brown to approve the consent agenda as read. Is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion is approved. There's no unfinished business this evening. Madam Clerk, please read the next item of business. Thank you. That's an update from administration on emergency response efforts related to COVID-19. There has been no uh, new action taken uh, on COVID-19. So your communications, uh, Madam Clerk, please read the title of the IM under communications. Thank you. That's informing the City Council of the revised road paving program for fiscal year 2022 based on Council action and direction from the March 22nd, 2021 regular City Council meeting. Are there any questions from the Council? Next on the agenda is audience comment. Anyone in the audience? Mr. Graham. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> there is no commission minutes. Yes, ma'am. Would, would you please come back and state your name? Eileen Falkenstein. This is on a personal note. As a community member, I think it's a great thing that you do. The council members, the city administrators, 
take good care of the residents of the city and it's truly appreciated thank you ma'am so nobody in the audience wants to speak so next on the agenda madam clerk your comments thank you madam mayor just um to the council we'll see you back here day after tomorrow wednesday six o'clock no you won't <laughs> <laughs> that's the start of our budget um, presentations from departments so you all have your budget books that were distributed um, to you this evening inside the front pocket you see a table here it gives page numbers the departments we're going to be reviewing um, both in paper and then your electronic copy and then also you have a memo from me on top with your budget amendment forms so if you have any questions on that please let me know and that is um, one more quick thing you received a couple emails from me um, through our HR department for some training um, that training is due by April 30th and if all council members would be so kind as to participate that saves the city um, ultimately the taxpayers some dollars on our public entity insurance premium so thank you for that and that's all I have thank you ma'am madam attorney all right, I have no comments this evening okay um, I know I have introduced Crystal Nygaard, the Deputy Administrator, to you before, but Crystal, would you like to uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself? Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, it's an honor to serve on this administration. Uh, I come from the private sector, a very strong advocate of the private sector, and a champion for small business and government to work as partners. Uh, I know that the mayor is focused on economic development and engaging both the private and the public sector in developing our con economy in a very balanced manner. Um, she's also uh, tasked us with engaging with our policymakers to advocate for policies that help our economy grow and also uh, help us stay a champion as the fastest growing place in the state. Uh, so I look forward to working with everybody and be patient as I drink out of this fire hose called government. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I promise I won't go too far out of the box. So thank you. Thanks, Crystal. Uh, Council Member Johnson. Yeah, that's you. Um, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't quite understand. Um, thank you, Troy Eckers Lee, for the very good uh, introduction to the budget. I really appreciate the time you spent putting that together and going over it. Um, I do have one concern. Uh, I've been following our uh, COVID-19 uh, testing positive numbers along with our um, vaccine inoculation. Uh, I'm a little bit discouraged on the latter in that if you actually look at our state's ranking, we're at about the bottom. I think we're the second uh, to the bottom in terms of the amount of uh, vaccines which have actually been uh, given. In terms of the state, we were at 21% or something like that, whereas Anchorage was close to 30 and other communities were at 40 to 50. So. We in the valley here, I think, we, we tend to have a uh, go it alone, uh, don't tell me what to do government. But on the other hand, if you actually look at the efficacy of the vaccines, you also see that we in the Matsu Regional are still probably leading in terms of the percentage of uh, active vaccine finds. We need to get the word out, get vaccinated. It is effective, it will work, it will stop this curse on us. Thank you. Okay, uh, Council Member Vaylock. Uh, no comments, Mayor. Council Member Harvey. No comments. Council Member Brown. Ditto what Mr. Johnson just said and no other comments. Council Member Bernie. No comments. Okay, my turn. Uh, like Council Member Brown and uh, Johnson, 
I wish everybody would go get vaccinated, but it's not my job to tell them to do that. So um, I can tell you that I have been vaccinated, and we have a high percentage of city employees that have also been vaccinated. So, um, Troy, do you have a, a number? Out of 136 employees, we're at 35% vaccinated. Thank you. So having said that, um, all you can do is say, okay, this is my experience. This is what I've done. And uh, let's, let's all strive to make our community a better place and a safer place. So, um, and um, Troy, thank you for the presentation on the budget. And we will be here Wednesday night to uh, start the whole process. So everybody have a good evening. We are adjourned at 7 p.m.